Bilal Muhammad has absolutely no love for Colby Covington. Uh, <laughs> absolutely no love whatsoever. It's absolutely amazing to watch. In this episode, we are looking at the JRE MMA show. It's episode 134, Bilal Muhammad. Let's get into it. And I am still going to make the connection of personal development in here. You wait. Watch what he has to say, and then watch how I bring it to you. I'm always going to apply it to your life. Well, most of the time. Let's go. Fighters are the ones that, like, I want to figure out. Those are the right. ones that where everybody's telling me I'm going to get walked through. All right, let me figure him out. Kobe Covens is another one where Dana White, how about if Usman wasn't here, Kobe would be the champion. And I'm like, I don't think so. Like, I, I think Kobe sucks. I don't think that he's at as good as everybody thinks you he think is. he sucks? I think that... Compared to me, I think I'll be able to walk through him. I think that really? be, he's a lesser version of Sean Brady, I think. Because if you're looking at the guys he's fought, he's beating Woodley coming off of two losses. He beating Masvidal coming off of two losses. Robbie Lawler coming off of two losses. He hasn't fought one of the guys that's in the top ten right now. He's getting so much credit for losing close fights to Usman. Like, you're, get, you're a good loser? Is that what people are trying to say to him? I'm like, bro, why does he get all that credit for because he, him and Usman stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. Neither one of them went for a takedown. Neither one of them tried to shoot at each other. They were just two wrestlers kickboxing. So because he made it a close kickboxing match with a wrestler, makes him that much of a, a monster, a pound for pound guy, I just don't think so. Really interesting. I'd like to see that fight. Yeah, but what, does he have a scheduled fight, Colby? He doesn't have anything doesn't. yet, but he's been missing. Like, well, I, he I got keep sucker asking, punched yeah. by Masvidal, and apparently he really got hurt from that. Yeah, I mean, you I know. think it's hurt for court. You think so? Yeah, because I'm like, I don't know. I know people who know that him. Bad? And he said he actually got hurt. Yeah, like he was brain fucked damage? up. He was fucked up for a while after that fight, apparently, or after that punch. Like you nerves call it or? A fight. Yeah. I don't know. I'd be talking out of my ass. Yeah. But my friend who knows him well said, "Dude, he got really fucked up from that punch because he didn't see it coming." Yeah. And Jorge just ran up to him and sucker punched him in the face. But when you're at that, when you're that person, like you have to have security with it. I'm like. All the trash talk you say, all the dumb stuff, all the people that want to kill you, I'm sure every right. American top team, all them Brazilians you talk trash about, like you don't think that somebody sees you on the street is going to hurt you. And that's what I feel like a lot of these guys need to start realizing is like you could say whatever you want to build a fight, but when you're talking about a guy's family, his kids, yeah. Yeah. like he deserved it. I, I know that it was a sucker punch. It was dirty on Masvidal's end. Like be a street fighter, go street fight him in the streets, hit him with something, uh, but don't hit him and like run off. But I yeah. thought he deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm never going to kick a man when he's down, but like, right. I always kick Kobe Covington when he's down. Like, I don't care about Kobe Covington. Like, That's hilarious. I've had hate for uh, Sean Strickland, and I've called him out before, and I was at the fight when he fought uh, Pereira, and Pereira like, knocked him out. Mm -hmm. And I like got like I got up to go to the bathroom, and all these like, brother, stop. Don't go anywhere. Don't say anything to him. I was like, bro, I was going to the bathroom. Like, I hate him, but I wouldn't like laugh at somebody that they just got right. knocked out. Like I wouldn't go up to, oh, you just got knocked out, lol, or anything like that, because I know what it is to get knocked out in the cage. I know what it is to want it that bad and be that close to uh, achieving something, and you lose, fall flat on your face. So I would never talk trash about him. But if it was Kobe, I'd probably laugh and point and everything at him. Like I don't care about Kobe. <laughs> so he's your number one dude that you hate. Yeah, Kobe. Yeah, like well, that's a real possibility for you if he comes back. Like people are just don't know. I ask when is he fighting? Oh, he's not fighting for a year. He's gonna be. He's not gonna be fighting for a while. And then I'm looking at it like they say why? I'm assuming because he's claiming brain damage with the the court case. Mm. And I know like some lawyers, uh, like injury lawyers, and he was like, yeah, when somebody comes in claiming brain damage, like all I hear is cha ching. Like I know that I'm gonna get paid for it because you could claim like future injuries or anything like that, like mm. stuff that's gonna happen in the future. So. And the, the court can't do anything like, well, we'll wait 10 years before we let you get paid or anything. And if you're suing Masvidal, who's worth millions of dollars, and you're claiming brain damage, and they see you take a fight, they're probably going to be like, right. how are you going to take a fight if you have brain damage? That's a good point. And that's really interesting, too. Is like, Has there ever been a fighter that sued another fighter for a sucker <laughs> punch? Has that ever happened? No, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think in the UFC it's ever happened before. And I feel like that should be like guy code, like... Right. I'm not gonna call the cops or anything like that. Like I'm not gonna sue you off of that. And for especially for them too, because they had a relationship before. Right. They so, were roommates. Yeah, you were roommates for that long, yeah. and you're gonna sit there and go to court and sue them like that. That's to me. That's soft. Like I'm not gonna. If it's if it's if I'm Kobe, I'm gonna get revenge. If I'm Kobe, I'm gonna. You already embarrassed me in the cage, all right? Well, 
hire somebody on the street to jump Masvidal, all right? Oh, like boy. do the same thing. So, but when you're getting to that level, it's like it's three guys, and I like I'm not a guy that's gonna go to court or snitch or do anything like that. It's just I just don't like that mentality. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens because if he gets a million dollars out of the settlement, <laughs> you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> You know, I mean, many dollars for chip tooth. All right, it might. I don't know. I mean, if he really can prove brain damage, if he can prove that something really went wrong, I mean, we don't yeah. know. I mean, his career might be over. Who fucking knows? I don't yeah. know. I don't know what happened to him. You know, sometimes guys get hit and they're fucked up. Yeah, you know? especially if you don't see it coming. And especially like we've seen it with guys that get knocked out and they've never been the same. Yes from it. Yeah, and you're like, how the heck did this guy just change so much mm -hmm. off of that? And you're like. They took that much damage in a fight, and you don't know which fight it's going to be. And that's why I tell guys, don't spar hard because you don't want to lose those years, lose those that toughness from your chin because mm -hmm. you can't you can't gain muscles on your chin. Right. So how do I bring it back to your life? This guy has no love for Kobe Cole. He's like, ah, oh, he has brain damage. I don't think so. Ah, he's soft. Like, he wants to fight Cole. <laughs> he wants to fight him right now. Like, right now he wants to fight him. Like, Joe could have been like, Kobe, he's actually here. Would you like to see him? And he would just take off his shirt, and his coach would come up behind him and just spray water in his mouth, and he'd just be like, he'd spit it on the floor and be like, let's go. He'd just magically have gloves on out of nowhere. <laughs> but how do I bring it back to your life? You see, the way I see it is um, when it comes to this kind of competitive mindset that he has, because that's what it is. It's not just that he thinks he's soft. He wants to compete with him. Right. He wants to fight him. He sees Colby as and maybe I'm saying Colby's name wrong. Could be could be Kobe. Could be Colby. I have no I, you know what? I actually don't know. And guess what? I don't care. I got I got that. <laughs> I got that Bilal energy for <laughs> for Covington. OK, I know that. I know that name's right, at least. though. But if you could have the same hate towards one of your habits, like, how much better off would you be if you looked at one of your habits? I made a video about this before, talking about, like, looking at your habits as, like, a demon. Because Duncan Trussell and Joe were talking about that. If you could look at your habit the way that this guy looks at Covington, how much more success in your life would you have? If you could look at one of your habits and be like, I got no love for that habit. I, 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 want, I want that habit to come and try and, and fuck with me. I, wa I want it to. I want it to come. Come. I think that habit's soft. I think that habit is not following guy code. You see how he like, because of his standards and his values, he like puts himself above this person that he's talking about. If you could look at your habits and then look at who you are and have these values and, and disciplines and put yourself above those habits that are holding you back, like how much better off would you be? Yeah, yeah, I did it. I did it, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I did, okay? <laughs> but think about it, really. If you could just do that yourself, if you could look at somebody, or sorry, look at something in your life and take and take on the same mindset that Bilal has and towards that thing and really look at it with some disdain, really connect some negativity to it, Really connect that it's soft and it's something that you could, in his words, something that you could walk through. How much better off would you be in life? How much further along would you be in life? And then the question is, why aren't you? Why aren't you doing that? Why aren't you connecting your bad habits to negativity? Right? Why aren't you just walking through those habits? Why aren't you looking at those habits as just soft? Why aren't you doing all this? telling you that mindset of a fighter if you're not into ufc if you're not in, or it, maybe you are and you're just into the fighting you need to look more at the values and the mindsets that these guys have the discipline that these guys have because i'm telling you that is that is something that could get you through life there's a reason why i don't know if you're a young father if you know any young fathers or the older fathers there's a reason fathers put their kids into martial arts there's a reason for it it's because it disciplines them because it puts them on a high, it puts them, it puts their values instantly, it puts their standards instantly higher. Like right away, soon as, as soon as they start learning it and they get a little bit competent in it, all of a sudden, all of their values are heightened. Their health values are heightened. 
what they're willing to go out and do is, is, is all of a sudden heightened. How they look at violence is, is all of a sudden heightened and put on uh, put on a, uh, uh, a pedestal of more reverence than just about, you know, belligerent anger. It, it it enhances a person to get into this type of thing. My my time taking Muay Thai lessons like I I learned so much about discipline. Like I really want to get back into it. I want to get Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu. I'm I'm leaning towards more Muay Thai, but I'm also leaning a bit towards Jiu Jitsu. So I'm, I'm not sure which one, but I'm telling you, man, the mindset of these guys, it, it'll it'll enhance your life. If you're willing to just look past what they're doing and who they're talking about. Like, I don't even know this Bilal guy. Like, I've just started watching his stuff, just started seeing him. I'm telling you, you can learn so much. I mean, I, right now he's talking a bunch of shit about Covington. But I, it, go and watch what Covington's about. Go watch where he came from. There will be inspiration there. Go check out where Masvidal came from. There will be inspiration there. Go check out any of these guys. There's going to be inspiration there. Like put away all your petty thoughts about about steroid use or, or, or the fact that this is like macho shit or brain damage. Put aside all that stuff and look at who they have to become in order to become these guys. There's so much value there. I'm telling you. I'm out.